Happy Saturday. Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't subscribed, I don't know what to do with you. I need you to like. I need you to comment. I need you to subscribe. I need you to hit the notification bell because it helps us get the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. I just have a couple questions for you. Does it feel like your walls are closing in on you? Does it feel like the battle is already lost? Does it feel like there's no way you can get out of the situation you're in? Are you at your wit's end? Are you seem like you're against the wall? When you're, your back is against the wall, sometimes you have to pray prayers like King Hezekiah prayed in Isaiah 37 verse 20. It says, Now, O Lord our God, rescue us from his power. Then all the kingdoms of the earth will know that you alone, O Lord, are God. Why? did King Hezekiah pray this prayer? The king of Syria just sent him a letter saying that he's going to come and conquer his kingdom. Many of us have received letters of rejection. Many of us have received letters of divorce. Many of us have received letters of bad doctor's reports. But I want to tell you right now that God is able to rescue you from your situation. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, it reads, now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us. God has given us the power of prayer. When you pray, God is going to speak against what is coming against you. If you if we continue Isaiah chapter 37, verse 21 to 22, you see after is as Hezekiah prayed this prayer, you see how God returned his prayer. It said, Then Isaiah, son of Amos, sent this message to Hezekiah. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, say. Because you prayed about King Shenacheb of Assyria, the Lord has spoken this word against him. The virgin daughter of Zion despises you and laughs at you. The daughter of Jerusalem shakes her head in derision as you flee. When you couple your effort, when you couple your prayers with God's power, you will get a response like King Hezekiah got. And if we continue to verse 33 to verse 35, it says, And this is what the Lord says about the king of Assyria. His army will not enter Jerusalem. They will not even shoot an arrow at it. They will not march outside his gates with their shields, nor build banks of earth against his walls. The king will return to his own country by the same road on which he came. He will not enter the city, says the Lord. For my own honor and for the sake of my servant David, I would defend the city and protect it. In this case, the they represented the Assyrians. I don't know what they represent in your life, but I'm here to tell you right now, the title of this short message is, They Shall Not Enter. Say it with me, they shall not enter. One more time, they shall not enter. Sickness shall not enter. Divorce shall not enter. Poverty shall not enter. They may be at your gate, but they shall not enter. God will protect you. God will defend you with his mighty hand. In verse 36, in Isaiah 30, chapter 37, it says, That night, the angel of the Lord went out to the Assyrian camp and killed 185,000 Assyrian soldiers. When the surviving Assyrians woke up the next morning, they found corpses everywhere. If an angel, not even the Lord himself, but an angel of the Lord can kill 185,000 men in one night, what do you think can happen when, you, when God invades the camp of your enemy? Depression doesn't stand a chance. Anxiety doesn't stand a chance. Suicidal thoughts don't stand a chance when God invades 
a place. So I need you to invite God into your house, invite God into your heart, invite God into your mind, invite God into your marriage, invite God into your workplace, and you're going to see and witness how powerful your God is. So I decree in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I break the chains of depression in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I break the chains of anxiety in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I break the chains of suicidal thoughts right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I break the chains of guilt and shame right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I break the chains of infirmity right now in the mighty, beautiful name of Jesus Christ. I feel that. I, feel, I don't know about you, but I feel the presence of the Lord in this place. So when you feel surrounded, when the walls are closing in, please remember 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 to 9. It says, we are pressed on every side by troubles, but we're not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but not abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. The Bible says that the righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. Failure does not mean you, you got down, you got knocked down. Failure is when you stay down, but when you get back up, you remember that even though they're coming against me, even though they're at my gates, even though they're at my door, even though they're in front of my house, they shall not enter. I want to leave you with this scripture. Psalm 91, verse 5 to 7. It says, Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrows that fly in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in the darkness, nor the disasters that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though ten thousand are dying around you these evils will not i repeat these evils will not touch you remember they shall not enter i think every time you wake up in the morning you should look in the mirror and say they shall not enter Whatever they may represent in your life, you need to give yourself confidence and build your faith and say, they shall not enter. I don't know what you're going through, but I do know that you serve a God who's willing to protect you and defend you from anything or anyone who's coming against you. If you have any prayer requests, put it in the comment section below. I love you. God bless you, and I'll see you next time. Peace.